Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Garden. Today I'm going to be discussing my process for starting my backyard orchard. If you've been watching my channel for some time now, you'll know that I used to have about 600 square feet of very urban backyard gardening space and I've recently relocated. My new backyard has over 4,000 square feet for all sorts of really cool gardening projects. Stay tuned, I'll be making videos on vegetable gardening and all sorts of different things in the near future. But for today, I'm going to be discussing my backyard orchard. So, I really wanted to plant a backyard orchard that was very eccentric and had a lot of cool different things going on in it. For the most part, today I'm going to be talking about my peach trees, but I've also acquired a couple of citrus trees and fig trees as well. It turns out that the most opportune time to plant fruit trees is actually in the fall to give all winter for your fruit trees to put out their root system. Now, I'm discussing planting them in the spring. The reason for that is a lot of nurseries and hardware stores have fruit trees for sale in the spring. That's when I happen to buy my own. And so I hope this video is very helpful for you all if you've seen some fruit trees in stores and you're planning on planting them. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do in planting your backyard or orchard is draw out a plan for planting. So I made sure to space out all my peach trees by about 10 feet. Some of them are a little too close to the fence and I'll talk about that in a moment. But on the left here, you can see I have my Tex Princes and a La Feliciana. And on the right, I have my Royals S2 and the Rio Grande. And you're just going to want to make sure you space these out before you start digging holes. The other reason this is really important is because as the years roll on, you're going to want to remember the species of trees that you planted. When digging holes to plant your fruit trees, one of the very important things to consider is the soil quality that you're working with. So a lot of northeast Austin suburbs have this very dense clay soil, and you're going to need to do something to amend that soil before you just plant fruit trees straight in it. I got kind of lucky on this because back in November, I dug out a plot for a large raised bed, which you've probably seen in some of my videos at this point. If you're curious about that, you can go back to November and watch a video on it. But I didn't know what to do with all the soil that I dug out of that plot. So I just dumped all of the turf and clay soil in a corner of my backyard and got very lucky. As the months rolled on, it's been about three, four months now, I can see that some worms have been kind of digging through that clay soil and processing it. And some of the dense clay soil is now kind of loamy, amended clay soil, which is exactly what we need to cut our peach trees with as we plant them. The reason this is very important is that if you plant your peach trees in a very different soil than the native soil, they will tend to stay in that area, their roots won't branch out enough, and eventually they will die or rather just not grow to the full potential that they're capable of. In addition to soil quality, one other really important factor on where you're going to plant fruit trees in your backyard is dependent on sunlight. A lot of fruit trees need a lot of sunlight, so I've kind of explained this in a previous video. I'm going to cut back to me building my raised bed where I actually explain this whole concept. You can see my house over there is casting a shadow. Well, in the winter, the sun rises over there and kind of runs along that southern border. That's obviously the south. And so my house casts a shadow, which gets longer and longer as we approach December 21st. And this is the only spot of the yard that's in the sunlight all times of year. So that's why I chose it. One final thought for consideration is in planting your fruit trees, you're going to want to make sure they're not too close to your fence. If they get too tall, too close to the fence, they're going to peel over into your neighbor's yards and you're going to need to make sure to prune them so that they don't do that. After surveying my property, I found about a dozen locations that I thought would be a good fit for these fruit trees. Now, I've spaced them out about 10 feet apart each. You don't want them too close together. And the holes that you dig, you want them to be about twice as wide as the container that the fruit tree is in and about one and a half times as deep. So this is a quality hole that I've dug out here. Now, this hole would not be a good hole to plant my fruit trees in without scoring it first. And to explain what I mean by that, the dense clay soil of my backyard is kind of like a smooth container when you dig out a hole in the soil. If you have similar soil, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if I just planted a fruit tree in this container and filled it in with some quality soil, that would result in the fruit tree's roots never leaving the, the container that it's in, never leaving the spot in the ground, the hole that it's in. So what I'm going to do here with my shovel is kind of poke into the clay soil around the exterior of my planting spot and just try to, you know, stab into the soil, create a couple of holes here 
and allow the roots to eventually over time spread out into the various spaces that they're planted in. This is called scoring the hole. And so we're gonna go around and on every side we can find, we're gonna try to stab out as much space as possible. And to begin filling our hole, I've mixed up one third potting soil, one third raised bed soil, and one third processed amended clay soil in my wheelbarrow here. And just kind of turned it over with a shovel. The point of this is to create a soil that's going to be very nutrient rich for the fruit tree to be planted in, and also not totally alien in terms of the dense clay soil of my backyard. So we're going to use that to fill the hole a little bit. We'll put one or two shovelfuls of that into the hole and then use that to kind of fill out the rest of the root ball in general. This is a La Feliciana peach tree that I've got here and you can see the container that it's in is no more than about a foot high, maybe about 10 inches around. I'm trying to remove it and it's very fixed on there because the root system has grown through the bottom of the container. So I'm gonna have to employ some special measures to cut around this container. We should get it off and get our root ball situated. So once we've got the root ball exposed here, what I'm doing is just trying to shake loose the roots that are wrapped around each other in the container. The roots will kind of grow tight into knots. I'm gonna break apart those knots just a little bit. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. You can kind of just shake the root ball. You can poke it, you can cut it with scissors. You don't wanna to do too much because of course you wanna leave as much roots intact as possible, but you don't wanna leave the root ball just a tight knot of roots. Uh, that's going to cause the roots to kind of choke themselves out. So just employ whatever means you have to break them apart. And if you cut into the roots a little bit, don't worry about that. That's better than leaving them uh, in a ball. So now we're going to bury our peach tree in the amended clay soil, potting soil, and raised bed soil mixture that we've created. We, of course, don't want to bury the roots too deeply. We're going to leave them about half an inch below the soil. You can even bury them a little bit higher than that but you're not gonna to wanna to put too much soil on top of them as the roots need to get um, aerated as well. Lots of people choose to anchor their trees differently. The nursery that I bought this tree from used a bamboo pole to anchor their tree, and sometimes you can use like a metal tie down or something else. I'm just kind of stomping in the soil around just very gently. I don't wanna crush the scoring that I've done in the hole, and just enough to press it down before I water it in. And before giving it any water, this is the final result, my La Feliciana peach tree. This is actually the same type of peach tree that we grew at my old home. I'm very excited to see how it's going to do. I'm sure it'll be blooming very soon. So I'm going to do a walkthrough of my backyard orchard here. And we're going to start on the left-hand side, taking a look at some of my Texas Prince trees first. You can see this one here came from Costco. It was $20. It's yet to bloom, but I think it's going to turn out great. These other two are from a nursery nearby called Green and Growing. They're up in Pflugerville. I highly recommend you check out that nursery. They have some amazing fruit trees there. So here I am for scale. I'm about five foot nine. And you can see these trees are way bigger than I am. One of these trees is probably a solid 10 to 12 feet tall. And they were $42 a piece. Here is the La Feliciana I planted. That came from Costco, it's $20 as well. And here on the right side of my backyard, I've got a couple of Royal Zest trees. All of these came from Costco, they were all $20 a piece. This made my backyard orchard very easy to plant, very affordable. And this one over here is a Rio Grande peach tree, it was also $20. That brings the total sum of the cost on my backyard orchard to $400. I'm sure you could get started for less, but this is what worked for me. Not everything in my backyard orchard has bloomed yet. It's very early March. We're just entering into spring as far as Austin weather is concerned, but I'm very excited for the way all of this is going to turn out. At this point, I have a total of a dozen fruit trees in my backyard. That's eight peach trees, two fig trees, and two of these avocado saplings, which I've grown from a seed here. I'll be discussing a whole bunch of different things in the weeks to come, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. But for today, 
I'm just very excited to share how I'm getting my backdoor orchard started. And I'm sure in the next couple of months, we're gonna have peaches and all sorts of different really cool shots of the way that this has turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was inspiring or that you've learned something. Once again, thank you for watching Austin, Texas Gardening, and I'll see you in the next one.